Episode 3, Footminder 2015 with Aston Villa. Join you back. It's the 18th of October in game time. And it's this big relegation battle with Crystal Palace at home at Villa Park. Um, I'll, before we get into the game, I will take you through the previous fixture. Since the last game, you guys know, was the opening day defeat to Southampton. 1-0, Toby Alderweireld with the goal. It's a pretty scrappy game, it's a pretty scrappy goal to be honest. Then back that up though with a 1-1 draw away at Man U in Old Trafford. Wayne Rooney opened the scoring for them in the 67th minute before Gabby Ekbon Lahore sneaked a late goal on the counter to equalise in the 82nd. And we managed to get out of Old Trafford with a 1-1 draw which I thought was a very good result. Back that up then with a 5-0 win. Uh, away at Barnsley in the Capital One Cup second round. Two for Gabby Ogbon Lahore, two for Joe Cole, and one for Fabian Delph, securing an easy victory and an easy way through to the third round. And a loss, 2 1 of Stoke at home, which is a disappointing result, especially after Gabby Ogbon Lahore had put us ahead in the 26th minute. Andy Vyman, though, did get a straight red for a two foot attack in the 52nd, and ever since that happened, it was downhill with Jeff Cameron and Azama Asaidi. Um, Turning it completely around for Stoke to for them to win the game 2-1. We then lost 3-2 uh, to Swansea. Gilfie Sigurdsson opened the scoring for them before we turned it around to win our uh, lead 2-1. Philippe Senderos and Gabby Ogbonlahor once again before Ashley Williams equalised and followed by an Ali Sissoko own goal in the last minute giving Swansea all three points. Got a bumper crowd of 41,000 in to watch us at home versus Chelsea. And we were 1-0 up after 21 minutes. Libor Kozak scoring a goal. First game, it's his first game back after a seven-month injury from a broken leg. And he managed to score against Chelsea. But Andre Schurle and Loic Kremi scored within three minutes of each other before John Terry netted in injury time uh, to secure the win, I suppose. Followed that up, though, in the Capital One Cup third round with a much-needed victory, a 4-2 win. We took the lead through Darren Bend. But goal, uh, a Rene Adler own goal and a Craig Dawson header uh, put West Brom in the lead at half time 2 1. Kieran Richardson did equalise in the 50th minute before a Gabby Ekbon Lahore brace saw the difference between the two sides come with a nice 4 2 win. It also means we're playing Crystal Palace, uh, who we're actually playing today in today's live commentary, in the fourth round, and that's only a f in a few weeks in game time. Then we went back to the le uh, league and drew 0-0 away at Sunderland. Uh, it's a fairly dire match to be honest, N nothing much happening and yeah, Jordan Sikori picked up the man of the match with a 7.4, shows you how exciting it was. And then we drew 1-1 with Spurs, I was meant to live commentate this but uh, my recording software did fail, so I'm sorry about that. Because it's actually a pretty entertaining game as well. Um, Jordan Sikori got an injury. Christian Eriksen put them ahead in the 54th minute with a 25-yard goal for Gabby Ekban Lahore scrambled in a late equaliser in the 88th minute to give us a point, a much-needed point, I have to say, because, as you can see, we are in 18th position. We are in the relegation spots with only three points, only West Ham and Palace beneath us, and we're playing Palace today. A win today, though, could lift us into 15th, provided other results do go our way. Uh, as you may have noticed, the star of the year so far has been Gabby Egbon Lahore, who has scored eight goals in seven games in all competitions, four in five in the league and four in two in the cup. Just simply superb, he's playing extremely well. Uh, Injury-wise, not quite as bad. Joe Cole, Andy Vyman and Fabian Delph currently on the injury list. All of them fairly long-term though, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, Christian Bateke is finally back, but he's not quite fully fit. He's played, he's made two substitute appearances, but he's just not quite at the uh, level he needs to be, I think, to start a game, start the game. So Libor Kozak is going to start today again against Palace. Only 32,825 tickets sold, which is a poor enough crowd, although you come to expect it in these smaller games. The team we've got today is Adler and goal back for Sissoko, Vlar, Okore and Loughton. Sanchez playing behind Cleverly and Richardson in midfield with Grealish and Agbon Lahore on the wings and Kozak up front. Not the worst team I've seen, uh, but not the best team. Kieran Richardson is kind of filling in there at the moment. He's a bit of a utility man. 
We're waiting for Ashley Westwood to uh, regain full fitness and also Delph is out, which doesn't help. We'll go and attack from the off. Let's say that. Unlikely that that will actually happen, but nonetheless. Not the best team talk we got here. Nice Ahsoka looking to switch off. Kieran Richardson looks happy. Fantastic. Few of them listening keenly. Don't really know what that means, but nonetheless, we get into the game here today against Crystal Palace, who really are just in as bad form as we are. Only two points picked up for them in their first seven games, although only three points picked up from ourselves in our first seven games. Despite getting two draws in our last two games, though, which means maybe there's a little bit of an up. Maybe we're on a bit of an up here. Uh, it was a tough win or a tough draw away at Sunderland it was a tough one and then a very good draw against Spurs who I don't think we were expected to get anything from and rightly so probably you know Spurs are in third place I think and uh, we're in 18th so you're kind of thinking actually getting a draw against them is a very good result so Corey hacks that clear N nobody's really uh, managed to get a grip on this game after half an hour really probably a sign of two teams out of form no team Looking to really assert their dominance and Jack Grealish hits the post. It's a bit unlucky for the young, young Irishman. He's got bright, bright future, I think, in real life. And he doesn't seem that highly rated in the game, which actually does disappoint me. I outlined that in the first episode, uh, that I thought he, he could be better. I suppose Libor Kozak has been shit, so despite Benteke's not quite being ready, I don't think I'm going to have to bring him on, see if he can... Maybe produce a bit of Christian Benteke magic that we've all come way too accustomed to as Villa fans. He's picked up a knock, so he's off the pitch at the moment. He's something like forty-eight percent. He's a Loughton. Can he? Uh, have to come back into Sanchez once Richardson. Nobody's up though. Nobody's giving an outlet for these guys because Benteke is off the pitch as well. That's not really helping us along. So Bon Lahore, can he play it out to Sissoko? He can. That's a good balling. Jack Grealish. At the back post, and the young Irishman does... Oh, no, he doesn't strike, because it doesn't count. That is a fucker. I didn't see that one come up. I actually didn't think he was offside, so I didn't even look at the lines, but usually I do, in those kind of touch-and-go scenarios, I do look at the lines and see if he starts moving or not. If you don't know, that's the way to find out whether um, it's offside or not. If they don't move, it's clearly offside. Ron Laura's had to go off because he's uh, he didn't play very well and also knackered. Charles and Zogby has had to come on for him. Doesn't look like either team is going to break the deadlock today. And it's really been a low quality match here at Villa Park. But it's Christian Benteke! How does he do it? He has become the saviour once again. 86 minutes. There were suspicions of offside. I have to say, I thought he might have been offside myself. But I'm not complaining. We'll have a look in the replay. See, was there anything suspicious going on? They're extremely annoyed about it. There were four or five Palace guys giving out. Is he offside? It's touch and go. Uh, I think Scott Dan is probably playing him offside. Onside, sorry. It's Christian Benteke who's pulled up a vital goal for us. And here's Tom Cleverley. He finds Jack Grealish who hits the bar. But yeah, he's... Had a disallowed goal and hit the woodwork twice today. That's a bit unfortunate for the youngster that he hasn't got on the score sheet. And Teke there holding the ball up well. Finds Richardson. He's got in Zogbia now. Can he find a man? No, he can't. Sanchez sweeps up. Sissoko. And Zogbia. Benteke! Hits the bar. But this does look like it's going to finish up. Vlar hits the bar now. But there it is. A fantastic goal from Benteke. Gives us our first league win of the year. That is great. That is exactly what the team needed. Up to 15th, as I said, we might be. Which is fantastic, as I said before. Saying fantastic just all the time now. Next game will actually be the Arsenal game. I'll skip the Newcastle game because the Arsenal game is a bit more, I suppose, big. Uh, but a nice little run we got going here. Unbeaten in four in all competitions. Got Liverpool next though away, which is going to be very tough to keep up that record for a game against Palace at home. 
in the cup, which I'm really looking to win because I want to do quite well in the cups. Maybe a chance, maybe a route into Europe is the Capital Cup. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and give us a thumbs up also for the three points, which is hard hard work. You look at the match stats, you know, it was a tough enough game. Probably the highlights didn't really suggest the game being even that entertaining. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, as I said before, and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Anyway, 